This conference will now be recorded. All right, this is a Math 211 video for Section 2.7. We had one example left from the notes on that. Um, so it's this example where if a ball is thrown vertically upward with a velocity of 80 feet per second, then its height after t seconds is given by the position function s equals 80t minus 16t squared. The first question is, what is the maximum height reached by the ball? That would happen when the velocity function, or first derivative, equals zero, because remember that's where we would have a max or min. So we're going to set, um, first of all, finding the velocity function is taking the first derivative of this function. So that would be 80 minus 32t. We'll set that equal to zero. Now this will not give us the actual height. This will give us the time that it took for it to reach that height. So 32t equals 80. So t equals 80 over 32, which reduces all the way down to 5 halves um, if you divide top and bottom by 16. So 5 half seconds. Now we need to find what would that height be at 5 half seconds. So we need to plug that back into our position function. So that's going to be 80 times 5 halves minus 16 times 5 halves squared. That's going to be 40 times 5, so that'd be 200 minus 16 times 25 over 4, if we square that fraction. So that makes this 200. That would be 4 times 25 after we reduce. That's going to be minus 100. So it looks like the max height that this ball is going to reach is 100 feet. Now the velocity of the ball, what is the velocity of the ball when it is 96 feet above the ground on the way up and on the way down? But we're going to be setting 96 as our position. So we're going to set that equal to uh, s in our function. So that's 96 equals 80t minus 16t squared, because that's what it means to be 96 feet above the ground, is this function would equal this. Um, I would probably move everything over to the right by adding the 16t squared over and minusing the 80t, just so we can get all of this together on the same side. We can pull out a 16, that would leave me with a t squared minus a 5t and plus a 6 equals 0. That factors into t minus 2 and t minus 3. So that would be time equals 2 and time equals 3. Now, what, and that's seconds again. So what this means is that um, in the position function s, when we put 96 in for the feet above the ground, there were two places where our position was at 96 feet above the ground. One was at two seconds and one was at three seconds. Now, if we want to find the actual velocity for those different values, we would need to do V of two and V of three, because those are our times. So remember, uh, the V function we've had for velocity was 80 minus 32 times time, so that'd be two, and 80 minus 32 times two again, or sorry, three again. Um, now what we should see is that the two seconds should be on the way up, so we should have a positive velocity, and the three is on the way back down, so we should have negative velocity. So this one comes out to 80 minus 64, which means our velocity would be 16 feet per second. So that's for V of two, so at T equals two. The other one is gonna be 80 um, minus, that's going to be what, 6, 96, so that comes out as negative 16 feet per second, and that's at time equals 3 seconds. So there is the uh, velocity on the way up and on the way down, and that is the only one we had left from section 2.7.